episode 2 of the Amped Up vlog entitled B as in Bionic. Today I'm going to tell you how I became patient 15 in a clinical trial that is a joint effort between Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the purpose of which is to devise a bionic prosthetic limb. So what's a bionic prosthetic as opposed to a non-bionic one? So to give you an example, the prosthetic that I am currently using is not a bionic one. So it's got its components like a socket that I slide my limb into. It's got a microprocessor, knee joint, and a foot joint. However, the way to move it, the way to make those components move is through the biomechanics of my walking. So moving the upper part of my limb, moving my thigh, and knowing how and when to transfer my weight from the heel of the prosthetic foot to the toes is what makes my whole limb, including the prosthetic leg, move. And this is also what makes the knee joint to bend or to extend, depending on what I wanted to do. So this is a non-bionic prosthetic because in a bionic one, I wouldn't need to move my entire upper limb to move the foot or I wouldn't, move to, I wouldn't need to move my upper limb to make the knee bend. I would just think about having the, the more or less conscious, probably subconscious too, intention to bend my knee <clears throat> as I do for my good leg, for my right leg. So I would just think, I would just plan. It would be motor planning. I would plan to bend my knee and then that intention would be sent to my muscles. The muscles would contract and this is what would bend the bionic knee joint. So as some of you may have heard in episode one, A as an amputation, it took me 10 years to make the decision to amputate part of my limb. And after I made, after I had made that decision, I wanted to make sure that I consult the right people about the, the amputation surgery itself. So I wanted to make sure that the people with the right expertise in the field of amputations have a look at my limb and give me their opinion, provide me with their opinion on the plan that I have devised here with the surgeons in Poland. So one day I came across a TEDx speech by Professor Huber. He is an MIT professor who is a bilateral below the knee amputee himself. He had a climbing accident sometime in the 1980s uh, as a teenager, I believe. Later he became an engineer and then an MIT professor, which is when he began to develop bionic limbs. Just imagine for a moment what the world might look like in 50 years. In the future, every human individual will have a plethora of technologies to augment their bodies. In 1982, both of my legs were amputated due to tissue damage from frostbite incurred during a mountain climbing accident. At that time, I didn't view my body as broken. Technology is broken. I'm an MIT professor today, and I recently started the Center for Extreme Bionics. Seeing his static speech, I thought, okay, this guy, because of the clearly amputation-related field that he works in, he must be familiar, he must even personally know some people, surgeons, um, who specialize in amputations. So I emailed him asking, um, asking if he can provide me with any names, recommendations of um, orthopedic, plastic, mic microvascular surgeons performing amputations. And I remember, I thought to myself, there is no way an MIT professor who is basically already, I guess, a celebrity, in the scientific world and must be very, very busy, right? There is no way he is going to respond to, to an email from me, a stranger, some random girl from Poland who is writing to him about surgeons and surgeries um, and asking for names. To my amazement and enormous surprise, he replied the next day saying, 
Hi, Anna. Please meet a world, world class surgeon, Dr. Matthew Cardi, who works in Boston. Um, so that, that's how I met Dr. Matthew Cardi. The next email I, I wrote was, was an email to him. He invited me to come to the US. So first I came to get to know him and to allow him to see my limb, to examine and inspect it in, in person. Um, and to make sure that he also agrees with the amputation plan, with the plan that we had, that, that I had already had at that point, the plan of transforming and reshaping my limb into a thigh that can be, can be put into a proper prosthetic socket with a bending knee mechanism. Um, so after he saw me, uh, he did basically come up with the same plan that I have heard that I had heard before from uh, specialists that I consulted in Poland and in Europe mostly. Um, and then it turned out that there is a clinical trial that he and Professor Heher basically. Um, Professor Heher and his um, his students um, that they have just launched, and that they're recruiting patients for a new special experimental type of amputation called the Ewing amputation from the name of the first patient who decided to undergo this type of surgery, Jim Ewing. So how is this amputation surgery different from standard one? Well, it's different in, in the way that the Ewing amputation preserves nerves and muscles in a way that is not typical for a standard amputation. So the muscles that are responsible for the upward and downward movement of my foot, as well as those that are, that are responsible for knee flexion and extension, in my case, for an above the knee amputee. Those muscles are preserved in special muscle constructs called muscle pulleys, or to be scientifically correct, agonist antagonist myoneural interface, Amy in short. And um, the muscle constructs working in the form of pulleys, they remain active even after the body part that they subserve is removed. So um, even though my foot is no longer there, the muscle constructs should be active. I should be able to move those muscles to contract them consciously. Um, and this is what should be able to control a bionic limb that is being developed at MIT. So the bionic limb, the bionic foot, and later the bionic knee joint should be able to read my muscle movement. And this is what should translate into knee bending and foot movements, upward and downward, or foot rotation movement. So this is what I knew about the UA surgery before I decided to have this new special type of amputation. And I was shown a video of the first patient who, under, who underwent uh, uh, the Ewing amputation, Jimmy Ewing, uh, moving a bionic foot with his, with his own mind, but basically fidgeting. And my jaw dropped. <laughs> that was so cool to see. That was fall 2017, and I, and I couldn't believe this is really happening, that this is where science is. And it really was there at that time, at that point in time. So after I made the decision, we made the surgery, we did the surgery, um, I got to test the bionic limb approximately six months after my surgery. So of course I did get the first prosthetic done. I was already walking with it. It wasn't a bionic one because as I have said, the bionic limb, at least the one that is being developed at MIT is only in the lab. This is what I knew before the surgery as well. So I knew that this is experimental, that this limb is being tested as is the surgery itself. And that before it is available for patients around the world, be before prosthetic providers, prosthetic facilities can offer solutions like that to patients. It has to be developed, it has to be tested on people who are amputees. Uh, so I knew that I won't have a bionic limb device, especially for, for myself, just as, as it wasn't device for any other patient in the project and I won't be able to take it home. I knew that at this point, I will only be able to test in the lab. And I did. All right, I'll All right you're on, let's see. Okay. 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 Are you recording? 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're flexing your leg, and that's that's what's making it move, right? Yeah. We think so. And why are you flexing your right leg? To help the left one. If oh, it, just for when you're thinking. Yeah. Right. Think like you don't have to do it, but it just makes it easier for thinking wise. That was only the left one. I wanted, when you come, we'll have it more programmed. Yeah, I wanted to do it faster, but it's like resisting the up. Huh. See? So I'm like... So having that prototypical bionic foot that wasn't actually... That was a very old prototype. The, the most recently programmed prototype is somewhere out there and, and that I will be given... I will be asked to test this sometime later. Uh, probably six months later, which unfortunately didn't happen because of the COVID pandemic. Um, however, during that testing, it was really cool to see that this foot is responding to me moving my muscles, even though it was attached, it wasn't even properly attached to my limb, it was just attached through electrodes and tiny cables and cords. Still, it did work. So that was pretty amazing. Uh, in terms of how it felt physically, physiologically, well, it didn't feel any different as me moving those muscles right now. Um, so I'm sitting, I'm wearing a prosthetic, a regular prosthetic right now, and my limb is in the socket and I can still move. I feel that I'm moving my foot, my, my toes basically up or down, mostly up. I can also do the rotation movement and I feel I'm doing it. I feel the muscle move. If I took my socket off, I could see those muscles moving on my thigh. And I can also feel and see the muscles that, that, that control, used to control my anatomical knee joint uh, that wasn't really functional, but it did have some very, very limited range of motion. And I can also uh, feel those muscles moving when I want to. So what is interesting is that when I was testing that bionic foot, when I was performing the upward and downward movement, as well as rotation movements, I could see that the range of motion that this bionic foot had was a lot bigger than my anatomical foot that I amputated had ever had because it was so dysfunctional and deformed from all the surgeries and also from the congenital defect. So yes, even though the muscles are the same, are mine, uh, this bionic foot had a better range of motion than my anatomical one had ever had before it got amputated. With that being said, I can tell you that bionic limbs, especially a bionic knee joint, is one of the biggest hopes I hold out for the future when it comes to prosthetic technology and my personal experience with prosthetic legs and walking, my walking in general. Because for an above the knee amputee, the foot isn't that important anymore. Of course it's important, but what is more important for my gait and for the safety of my walking and for the degree of control that I have over my walking is the knee joint. Uh, so to imagine that I would be, should be, and will be able probably someday to have a bionic knee joint that bends, flexes, and extends whenever I want to, when I want to, that I don't need to be that careful as to whether I put my weight on the heel or the toes in the right, at the right moment. But to have a bionic knee joint that I basically control with my mind in a similar way that I control the, the, my anatomical leg, my good leg, my good knee, it's incredible. And this is definitely something that I'm waiting for. And the way my surgeon put it is that usually technology is ahead of what we do in medicine or ahead of the surgical tools and techniques that we have. At this point, it's the other way around. So there have been 20 patients who had this special surgery and I know that another 20 are coming. Many people believe that this new type of amputation, the Ewing amputation, will become a standard amputation someday or some version of it, some alternative uh, procedure with elements of the Ewing amputation will, be, will become a standard amputation procedure. So this time, the surgical technique is ahead and has been ahead of technology. So we have all we need in our limbs, all we need physiologically, to control the bionic limbs, and we just need technology to catch up with what we have, with, with what was done in our limbs during the Ewing amputation. So this is it. If you have any questions, 
uh, regarding the Bionic Lips project, anything that, that you're interested in, drop me a message or ask me in a comment. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I can pretty much tell you that it just so happens that I was the first patient from Europe to undergo the Ewing amputation surgery. Uh, as far as I know, all most, if not all, of the first 20 patients were either American or North American citizens. So, um, but I know that more patients from Europe are coming. And what is important to me personally and to many other amputees out there, the bionic knee joint is also in the words and that's this is what I cannot wait to test. Okay, thank you so much for today. And please join me for another episode entitled C as in, can you guess what C stands for in the following episode? I'm sure you can, knowing a little bit of my story, I guess it's easy to guess. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.